Hi everybody, welcome to the True North Audio YouTube channel. I'm Toby, and today I'm going to be talking to you about key spikes. What are they, how can you make them, and how can you use them? So, what are they? Essentially, they're small blips of sound which you put into a track, and they are then used to trigger samples, compressors, and gates. Um, there's some other stuff you can do as well, but those are the three things we're going to be talking about particularly today. Um, there's a number of different ways you can create them. You can either hand draw them in yourself, or you can use something like Logic's um, Drum Replacer, which will actually read uh, the hits from a track and turn it into MIDI, and you can use that to create key spikes. Or the way that I'm going to show you today is using a uh, Slate Trigger and a TCI, which is geared up specifically for this task. So I'm going to run through how we do that. I've got this session open here, which is a... Um, Joey Sturge's production inspired cover of Sexy Back by Justin Timberlake. So I'm gonna what we're gonna do to begin with is we're gonna make a spike track for the kick. So if we get the kick in, which sounds like this. I'm just gonna zoom in the waveform to make that easier to see. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna place slate trigger on this track. And within the browser, we have a TCI here, which is called the Spike. Now, you can actually download this for free from True North Audio's website. Uh, there'll be a link in the description. And what you want to do is, we're just going to loop this section here. And you see at the moment, it's not actually firing. So we need to bring the detail down. And you can now hear clicks. Now with this particular key spike TCI, it's fully velocity it's got full velocities on it. So if you wanted to keep the dynamics of the performance so with the, the um, gentle hits and the hard hits, you can still do that using this. Whereas if you use just a one shot uh, spike, they will all be the same volume. This is nice if you want them to make sure that everything ties together and keep the dynamics. Of course, if you don't want to, you can actually use the cur curves here and adjust the velocity so they're all really hard hits. Now, what we'll do after that is we will bounce that track in place. Um, and in this particular instance, we don't want to replace the track. We don't want to bypass the effects plugins either. And we are not going to have normalization on. I'm actually going to normalize it, but I'll do that afterwards. So in Logic at least, uh, once you do that, it'll actually um, mute the track that you've gone from. So press Control M, I'll unmute that. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is, because if we look at this waveform, we can't see anything. If we normalize that, that'll then make it, it will basically raise the volume of the region up until the, um, the loudest uh, of those hits peaks up. So if we zoom in here, we can see that this is what I was talking about with the velocity. This hit here is softer than this hit here, which is what actually happened in the original track. So if we listen to this one now, so we've basically got the those blips. Uh, and then what's really good idea to do in best practice is actually zoom in on this and make sure they all line up. So you can see this one doesn't. So I've just moved the whole region, but yeah, because they're all all of their coming in ever so slightly early. But what would be really good to do is actually go in here and just line those up. So that's the most time consuming part of this, is actually just going in and checking that they're all correct. And mostly they're pretty close. It depends on how picky you are about it and how quick or slow that the track is as to how in depth you go with that. So I'll just attach those back together. So what do we do with this? How is that useful? Well, one of the things we can do is we can put in slate trigger and we can fire off uh, a sample, so let's say for example we go with um, this one here and we'll put in this one here as well if 
you're firing your trigger from the key spikes, you'll see from my experience you get less uh, misfires and less uh, out of alignment hits, especially once you go in and just double check that everything is lined up correctly. What you can also do as well is actually blend these together. Like that. Um, and then what I would generally do is I would actually duplicate this track and duplicate the region. And I would have this one here would be my sample, which I would actually bounce in place before mixing. And this one here, I would actually turn off the output completely. And this would be my spike track. So let's just rename these. Um, kick, sample, and kick, spike. And now what I would do, one of the things I would like to do with the spike is actually use it to tame the bass. So let's listen, listen to the bass. Let's go on this section here. So what you'll find when you're mixing is quite often the bass and the kick are actually fighting for room in the low end. So you can make a bit more space for the kick by uh, triggering a compressor on the bass, which is fired from the key spike of the kick. So what I'm going to use for this is a plugin which I lo absolutely love called Multipass. This is a multiband processor. So what we'll do is essentially everything under, let's I mean, it's good practice to actually listen and work out where exactly you want this, but just for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to put it at 61 and less. We'll put in a compressor. We'll load up a sidechain of the kick spike. So you see here, what's happening here, this is actually monitoring the uh, gain of the spike track. And what I'll do is I'll put it on the fast mode and I'll bring the threshold down. Now generally what I want to do is put the ta attack down to nothing and the release, I'll just play around with that to find um, the amount of transient of the kick that I want to come through and before the uh, the level of the bass goes back up again. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this across and solo this so you can hear exactly what's happening. Now you're hearing a click there because it's really extreme. So if we, let's just bring the ratio down and the threshold up slightly. So you can hear the bass pumping um, to let the kick through. So if we now listen to the bass, I'll put this back down to a sensible figure. Now focus on the low end when you're listening to this. Bring this up more. Now what I'm gonna to do to demonstrate this, I'm gonna on the stereo I'm just gonna put in a high pass, sorry, a low pass. Um so we're just focusing on the low end. So all we can hear is 110 hertz and below. So we can hear both the bass and the kick coming through, but they're kind of fighting for space. So watch what happens when I turn this on. You can hear that kick punching through much easier and much better. So that's what uh, one trick you can do with compression on um, kick and bass. Now the other thing I like to do is a similar thing but with snare and guitars. So let's just uh, create a spike track for the snares. We'll do that in the same way that we did for the kick. Now 
There we go. So that's I've brought the detail down to make sure that we're not missing anything. Again, I'm going to bounce the track in place. We are going to make a new track. We're not going to bypass the effects. And we will normalize the spike track. Okay. And again, we would want to go through here and make sure everything's coming through correctly. So what one thing you can do is you can either eyeball it and go through and have a look and check. But what you can also do is if you load up a sample onto um, the spike track and then just listen and you'll notice which hits are out of phasing and you can grab those and move those rather than going in and eyeballing all of them. That's another option. Um, again, what I would do here is I would duplicate the track, duplicate the region, and then we've got snare sample snare spike and I'll turn the audio off of the snare spike track this is really useful because it it will still fire the side chains on the gates and on the compressors and everything but you won't hear that spike coming through your speakers or through your mix which is really good so with the guitars let's go back to that section again <laughs> um, so if we play the snare So you notice that they're fighting for that space where the snare lives. So what I would do is I would put on an analyzer. See where the hits are. So we've got this one here, 190, the fundamental. We've got a nice bit of juice happening here, 2.4K. So that is where I want the snare to cut through into the guitars. So I will put on another instance of multipass. There's other programs you can use. There's other plugins you can use instead of multipass, uh, like Pro MB. Um, but multipass is just what I like to use for this particular instance. So we said, and what we'll do is, so we said it was 190. So we want a little bit lower, a little bit above it, and then again we want. So it's 2.4. We want a little bit below and a little bit above. I'll put in a compressor. Put it to the side chain. We will side chain the snare spike, which is at the bottom. And yeah, let's just solo the guitars for now. So again, you can see the monitoring there of the spike. We'll bring the threshold down. And then what I'll do is duplicate that over to here. It sounds a little bit weird in isolation. But what I'll demonstrate now is if we put in the snare, I'll show you what it sounds like without this and I'll show you what it sounds like with it. Now I've just made it really extreme just to make it easier to hear but what you, what you'll hear now is that the snare can just like poke through the guitars in such a way that you can actually hear it a little bit better. So that's a cool thing as well. Uh, and then what we'll show you as well is with gates we can um, use spikes because if you've got some bleed coming through, well, there's not a huge amount on this one. You can hear a little bit of the cymbals and the kick coming through. Uh, what you could, I mean, what you could do is just literally just run a gate. But the problem with that is that other things that are coming through uh, as bleed will then potentially fire, uh, open up the gate as well. So if that kick, if, if there's like a really loud kick, that might o actually open the gate up and let that through. If you've got a hi hat hit because I had tend to be close to the snare that can then open it up um, and toms are obviously a big thing because the toms are quite close can be picking up a lot of bleed from the cymbals and the cymbals can open the gates and stuff so it can be a bit of a pain so what we'll do is I'm going to use multipass again it's kind of a, a meme when it comes to my mixes by this point but it's going to show you what we what we want so I'm going to put a gate in just on its own 
We're going to side chain to this NAS bike. We're going to set the gate to external. So you notice there, again, we're monitoring through so the spike, but because the spike is so short, it's only letting it uh, through for a very little amount of time. So what we need to do is adjust the release. So again, we'll do that on its own. And then with the gate, There you go, no bleed whatsoever. There's a tiny little bit of tom coming through, but that's because of how quickly the tom's being hit uh, after the snare. The snare hasn't quite closed, but that's fine. That's fine. We let's got rid of the cymbals, let's got rid of the kick, made it a lot cleaner. Um, so there you go. That's what you can do with the key spike. If you find that really interesting, of course, give us a thumbs up and all that sort of typical YouTube stuff. But we've actually got something really cool on the horizon which is the pro version of the key spike which i showed you uh, and that's going to be really really exciting so if you hit subscribe obviously you'll get to know about that as soon as it goes live so thank you very much for watching uh, as i said before do the youtube dance press the the old thumb and, and, and the subscribe and the bell and all that lovely stuff and we'll see you very soon